Hey, what's going on, Guardians? TBL here, and it's here. It's time. The very first issue of This Week at Bungie for the month of February has finally dropped. And as promised, Bungie has given us a little bit of sandbox information as the kind of meat and potatoes of this week's blog. Our goals for this round are to provide individual players with more hero moments by increasing overall speed and mobility, increasing the amount of supers you charge to demolish your enemies, and increasing the frequency and impact of our most montage-worthy power moments, especially in the Crucible. Here's what we're doing. And now, Guardians, it's time for that previously mentioned meat and potatoes. All three glides, plus catapult and strafe lift, have been retuned and buffed to make them more unique and faster. The mobility stat has had its range expanded and been completely retuned as well. In short, everyone gets faster and the high end is higher. Now I'm going to stop right there and say, yes, we're already starting off on a pretty good foot here. One of the biggest complaints about Destiny 2 is how slow and how sluggish you feel in comparison to Destiny 1, where you could zip zop zoobity bop all over a battlefield, basically in some cases never having to touch the ground. So them making some direct references to increasing our speed and our mobility, even so much as retuning the mobility stat in and of itself, this is a great way to start things off. All right, moving on. The player's ground speed cap has also been increased, allowing for faster total movement, regardless of how you may get there. Arcstrider, Sentinel, and Striker all move faster, and at the same speed as one another while in their supers. Arcstrider and its super will have faster attack animations, faster dodge animations, and increased range of all attacks. This is definitely a godsend for Arc Striders right now. I would agree when I say the, the neutral game for Arc Strider is pretty good, but the super is definitely one of the weakest in PvP right now because of just how hard it can be to land a kill, especially when you have to gap close or go up against another super. So having faster attack animations, a faster dodge, and increased range on your attacks, that gets a thumbs up from me. Moving on, supers now recharge faster for everyone. Next, we've buffed several weapon archetypes, including, but not limited to, hand cannons, pulse rifles, sniper rifles, and shotguns, and a few specific perks as well. They state that their key goal here is to make shotguns, snipers, and fusion rifles more prevalent in the game. But I'd imagine a range buff is certainly in the cards for something like pulse rifles. That's a class that's definitely needing a little bit of help in the range and damage falloff stats. Moving on. We've also been working side by side with our friends on PvP to increase the pace of PvP combat and the frequency of power play. Player respawn times for all quick play modes have been decreased. Power ammo respawn timers for all quick play modes have been reduced by 30%. Power ammo respawn timers in survival have been reduced by 40%. And power ammo respawn timers in countdown have been reduced by 25%. That's a very big change for some of those game modes. That means you're going to be getting your power ammo back much more frequently. Uh, within different modes of PvP, well really within all modes of PvP. But of course how fast you get it back is going to be scaled based on whether you're playing the quick play, uh, you know, for everybody playlist or the competitive survival and countdown playlist. Next up, ammo counts have been adjusted in relation to these timers and in relation to weapon type. Enemy players will now drop their power ammo on death and the drop brick is available to anyone until picked up or until 30 seconds have passed. This is a massive change. You'll remember way back in Vanilla Destiny 1, that used to happen. If you killed somebody who had picked up heavy ammo, they dropped a nice beautiful purple brick for you to pick up and then just go on an absolute match-long rampage with Thunderlord. But that's also going to give other players who aren't always the fastest people to the ammo restock box uh, a chance to actually utilize their power weapons. Now, moving on, finally, the shoulder charge changes that went in a couple of months ago have been fully reverted. Hold on, can I just stop right there and say, holy crap, did they admit a mistake in a This Week at Bungie rather than saying, you know, we're not happy with the way this is working either. No, they just went right out and said, hey, we messed up with the shoulder charge thing. You guys were right. We're moving it back. All right, and they finish things up by saying this. One final note that will be important to all snipers out there. Many of you have rightfully complained that snipers flinch too hard when you're taking hits especially as they are now power weapons. We have dug into this and found that somewhere along the way towards shipping Destiny 2, we acquired a bug that is preventing us from being able to successfully tune this to the values that we would all like. We'll get it fixed and pushed out to you as soon as we possibly can. 
And all right, I have to say, this is pretty good. This is uh, this is starting to address some of the things that I really feel needed to be addressed uh, with the state of Destiny 2. We're learning about some weapon buffs that are coming. I would like a bit more detail when it comes to stuff like what are they buffing? How are they going to be buffing hand cannons? How are they going to be buffing sniper rifles and uh, and pulse rifles and all that kind of stuff? Which hopefully they'll be getting into detail more on in the future, but. This is good. It's good to know that those things are coming. It's good to know that they're reverting some things back to the way they were before, like shoulder charge. It's good to know that they're prioritizing sniper shotguns and fusion rifles to make them more competitive with rocket launchers. And it's really good to hear that they're going to be changing the way jumps work, the way the glides in the game work, as well as your movement speed and the entirety of the mobility stat to make you move a bit faster. If anybody who's played Destiny 1 or has gone back to it recently, uh, you'll know you move a lot faster in that game, and that's definitely something that's a bit of a sore thumb in Destiny 2. It definitely stands out, so I'm very glad to hear that Bungie's uh, directly addressing something like that. I'm looking forward to hearing more about what other sandbox changes, more minute details about those sandbox changes coming in the future. Anyways, be sure to let me know what you Guardians think down in the comment section below. What specifically would you like to see? Be sure to let us know. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on all of the latest Destiny 2 news. Anyways, I'm out for now. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty. <laughs>